Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna take a tour of an amazing Overlander tiny home built by a couple who likes to take their home wherever they go, and that includes some places without roads. Taking your home with you everywhere you go is such a luxury. And I think you guys are gonna be blown away by the interior of this space, so make sure that you stay tuned all the way to the end. And if you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. Hi, I'm Ray. And I'm Trevor. And this is Wazamu, our house on wheels. We went nomadic about four years ago. After doing a school bus, after doing military trucks, having the capabilities to go somewhere that heavier trucks can go without the constant redundancies that keep failing on those vehicles is why we ended up here. This build from beginning to end was just about five months. We were really lucky. I had a good friend who owns a really large trucking company and had like a 200,000 square foot yeah. warehouse with a lot of space. He gave us access to his property, you know, so we were in there doing all kinds of stuff. This truck is steel. If we have damage on the vehicle, you know, I can cut it out and re-weld it. The cost of steel for this one alone, I think was like exactly 37,000. Well, that doesn't include, you know, us getting our Dometic fridge or yeah. the stove or the lights or the insulation. Yeah, that was, a, that was a painful phone call. He like called me from the shop and he's like, hey, I'm ordering the steel today. It's our entire budget. <laughs> Nice. The whole build ended up being 110, mm -hmm. so we went over budget, over the 80,000. So we ended up having to buy and flip a house at the same time Trevor was building this to make up for the additional money we needed. If you want to buy this kind of truck brand new, you're not spending less than $500,000, which is really great for the few people in the world that can afford something like that. We obviously can't, but all in build costs $110,000 when we hit the road. That's what makes it unique. All right, so this is our 2008 GMC C7500 that we personally converted. The truck itself actually used to be quite a bit smaller. It was one of those snow plow dump trucks, you know, salting around, keeping everybody safe in the winter. The reason why we got it is because it came four wheel drive, had to do a little work to it, but ultimately four wheel drive was important to us because we like to go just about everywhere. From bumper to bumper, it's 28 feet, and then we added a trailer on there. We are sitting right at eight feet wide, so we do fill up pretty much an entire roadway. We're 12 foot two inches, so we do fall under a lot of the, you know, 13 feet six requirements, which is huge. All of our edges as well around the entire frame of the structure of the truck is reinforced so that if we hit a branch, you know, a tree, something like that, it's just gonna glaze over the side. It's not gonna go crushing through our vehicle. And with that as well, that's why I made the entire thing out of steel. So that if we do get a dent or we do hit something or we do roll over, God forbid, some damage kind of happen, I can fix it on the side of the road. But other than that, we're sitting on 42 and a half inch tires, this size tire, anywhere I go, I can get it readily available. It might not be the same groove pattern, but it's still gonna be an off-road tire. It's gonna keep us going. This is our water heater that's hidden in the mural. It's an on-demand, it's tankless. That's important for us. And then right beside that is our water fill for whenever, you know, we've got to fill up our 75 gallons of fresh water. That's where we fill it. All that filtration stuff and the, the tank itself, the motors, the pumps, the water heater is all mounted behind here inside. Propane for our hot water heater, we do have a shower. Propane for our wood stove, and then our gray tank for anything extra water wise, and then just simple storage in, in there. We got a 55 gallon diesel tank, which isn't as big as we'd like, but for right now it works. We do have a lot of space right here. That's actually why I didn't fill that space, because eventually I'm gonna add another 50 gallons to that tank. So we do fill off up pretty often, but for right now, it's what we got, it's what we can deal with. So we're there. So the GMC is a Caterpillar motor. It's a 3126. It's also got the Allison transmission, which is super simple to use, relatively easily available for parts, and just about everywhere you go, somebody's worked on one. 
This right here, this is our cooling system, additional cooling that I put on there, strictly for our transmission cooler. And obviously this is our behemoth bumper that I built. If you're gonna have a truck this big, you gotta have a cool front end. Come with me, let's check out the other side. So right here, this is my electrical bay. Everything in there is what controls our solar. We've got 600 amp hours of lithium phosphate batteries. So we do have 1,850 watts of solar on the roof and our Starlink is up there as well. But that's the only thing we got on the roof. This is the side of the truck that Ray's in. The other side of the truck's the side that I'm in, right? So you got passenger, you got driver. So this side's her. You know, she's this crazy artistic piece of insanity that gives me purpose and drive. And on the other side, stoic, emotional, and carrying around a big tool everywhere I go. Having a second source of transportation may be, other than buying the truck itself, the second best purchase we made. You know, not just is it nice to have a nice date night and go somewhere nice that's away from, you know, somewhere we can park in the truck, but simply being able to go get parts, go get, you know, fuel, get food, get fluids, whatever we need, and then have a little bit of fun. Just about everywhere we go, everybody assumes it's a military truck. There's nothing on the vehicle that's military, has been ever, or will be military except for our trailer. This is an Iron Eagle trailer we bought, not at auction, thankfully, but I went ahead and built a steel box over top of it. Inside, I have all of our extra tools, welding gear. That's where the motorcycle goes. It's also, unfortunately, right now, our trash dumpster, so everything's back there at the moment. But whenever you're off grid and all that kind of stuff, it's really nice to have a place that you can put protected food, protected trash even. It's kind of a pain in the butt to have a trailer everywhere you go, but when you realize it's everything you have, it becomes a necessity. So for us, it's not something I deal with, it's something I get to enjoy. So this trailer, very cool off-road trailer, it's a Humvee trailer in the military, but its tongue was about 24 inches long. So I extended it to eight feet so that when I jackknife it parking or I have to get around a tight turn, I have that maneuverability that most people don't. Not to mention that when I jackknife the truck, when I intentionally back up the trailer and have it so they're both sitting like this, they create this like cocoon for us. I got, nobody can see me over here, nobody can see me over here, so all I got is this little section right there. It just gives you a sense of peace and, you know, privacy, which is so nice. Let's check out the inside. Welcome to the interior, guys. We had the luxury of having two builds. In the first one, we did exact same square footage, but it just didn't feel open. It felt really stuffy when there were multiple people in here. So we wanted to fix that with the same square footage this go around. So we did that just by kind of creating like the open space in here. And we wanted the counter space to be a lot bigger than the first one as well for cooking and that kind of thing. This is our independent heat source. Trevor made this from an old propane tank he found in a junkyard actually, which is pretty cool. It was super important us to have an independent heat source in case of an emergency being parked off grid. We kind of always want to be prepared just to be totally self-sufficient. I wouldn't say that we use it a lot necessarily for heat because we do have a mini split that runs off of all of the solar panels, but this has been great for aesthetics. One of the big mistakes we made in our first rig was not having enough storage. So a huge priority for us was to fix that this go around. Um, and that started with this cab over area. Most people use the cab over for a bed, but we wanted a nice queen size bed. So our compromise was to put the queen size bed in the back and then use all of this area for storage. You gotta have your personal touches. This is just our like Polaroid wall from all of our travels. People we've met along the way, we're van life friends. I love pictures. I'm a photographer. Trevor has a film degree and I just always think that like photos are better souvenirs than buying stuff. So instead of buying little trinkets, which you can't do in a small space, our compromise is to collect photos. So that's what we do. I reference our first build a lot and that's because we learned so much in our first build. In our first kitchen, there was hardly any counter space. It was like a super small like corner area and it drove us insane when we were cooking. This time around, having like a really nice like layout for cooking and cutting was a really big priority. We have a three stove burner. Honestly, if there's a two stove burner, I would go with that. This is a random unnecessary burner that we never use. Um, however, I do love having an oven. We meet a lot of people that just have the stove top and I mean, you can't have pizza, you can't have cookies, brownies. 
that's not the life for me. Okay, those things were a priority, so the oven was a really big deal. I always felt like this lifestyle had to be exactly what a normal lifestyle looks like, just minimized. So I wanted all of the things that you have in a normal house, just smaller. For the fridge, we went with a Dometic. We've got the fridge on this side, freezer on this side. It's like a chest. You have to like dig around for your groceries and kind of like play Tetris to make sure everything fits. So I don't love that part about it, but I do love this space saver because if we had a normal size refrigerator, that would have taken up some wall space. So you just kind of have to decide what, what means more to you at the end of the day. So pros and cons. So something we did this time around was just make sure everything had its exact place where it needed to go and it was like a quick breakdown when we need to move. So we installed uh, magnets on all of our cabinetry so that when the doors are closed, they're like those really strong magnets and they just hold in place so we don't have to like mess with, you know, like wires or ropes or taking things down and putting them on the ground. Everything is just like in place, stays in place. It's great. In our first rig, we did real tile, even though Trevor told me it was a bad idea. It was a bad idea, all of it cracked. <laughs> so this time around, we did sticky tile from Amazon. Everybody always compliments it, they think it's real. Definitely the way to go, cheaper, easier, and it looks great. Most of the material we used for the build was recycled materials. This countertop is mahogany. We found it in a lumber yard. There's really no purpose for why <laughs> this sink is crooked. A lot of people ask about that. It's just to make the kitchen look more interesting. So this is Lewis, and I do feel like the majority of the build was built with him in mind because he's family and we wanted to make sure that we felt confident if we go on hikes or just leave the house alone for a couple hours, just like you would in a normal house. We wanted to make sure that the house was comfortable and functioning for him. So we installed kind of this smaller step in front of the bench area so that he can walk up with ease and get down if he needs food or water. It also duels as his toy chest, so he can access his bones and toys. He's a little spoiled, as he should be. I would say if you are traveling with a dog, a big priority is to make sure that you have access to AC, so either invest in your solar panels so that you can run your mini split with no problem, as he pants and acts like he's overheated. <laughs> Or just make sure that it's a hiking dog and it can go with you. Lewis is obviously a luxury dog and not a hiking dog. So a big priority for us was to be able to make sure that we had batteries that were sufficient enough to run AC for him and that he had access to and from like his food in the bed. Our bench also doubles as storage. This is where the majority of Trevor's clothes are. So we just kind of used um, crates inside to keep everything organized and that's worked really well for us. I did absolutely nothing for the entire belt, but I did paint this wall, so it's really important that you see my beautiful work. Don't look too closely because there's a lot of mistakes. But um, yeah, I just wanted to have like a cute, like Instagram worthy wall, so that's what this is. Under here we have our dry storage, that's where our trash is our vacuum, which I cannot recommend enough. We can basically just sweep everything into a big pile and then just use our vacuum to vacuum it right up. This has been really awesome for us. I don't know if other people use it, but I love having like a vacuum that's just really easy to access that I don't have to move. We also all have all of our plumbing under here. A big mistake we made the first go around was putting all of our pipes and plumbing on the outside of the rig to save on room. However, when we parked in our first um, freezing weather climate up in the mountains, all of our pipes froze and that really sucked. This is our queen size bed. Trevor is 6'2", Lewis is a 70 pound English Bulldog. So I really wanted to make sure I had enough space. I would have done a king size bed if it allowed, but queen size bed was big enough for us. So that's what we went with. Uh, it's just a regular mattress. I think some people do like van life mattresses, but this is just one that we got from like a mattress discount store. Above the bed, we've got our skylight. We have like a shade that pulls over that. But for Trevor, it was another exit because he wants to make sure everything's always like, you know, zombie apocalypse ready. So for him, it's an exit. For me, it's aesthetically pleasing. We've got our swivel TV here for entertainment. So we can pull it out and use it when we're in bed. It also turns when we're like in the kitchen. We also have a closet in this rig, which is a really big upgrade from our first one. It's not a huge closet, but it is a closet, so that was a win for me. Now we're gonna move on to the bathroom. 
This door is probably one of my favorite pieces in the house. Trevor's super artistic and you can see that in lots of areas in the tiny house. This door is made out of mahogany and he put like epoxy resin in these like cracks. And it's really cool because at night when the light's coming through in the window, you can kind of see through these and it's like a really cool effect. In this build, I told Trevor I really wanted to have like a separate bathroom. I didn't want it to feel like it was like this tiny closet that I was like crammed in. Um, so this time we have like a really nice like walk-in shower. One of the ways that we were able to do that was instead of doing like a shower curtain, we just turned like the whole bathroom area into like a wet house. So all of this is waterproof. We just use like stain that you would put on a back deck in a house. We also have our Nature Head compost toilet big game changer. If you are thinking about going from a black tank or a cassette or a compost toilet, I've had all of them. This is the best. Never had an issue with smell. It takes five minutes to change out and we can do it anywhere because we can use like a black trash bag if we're parked somewhere that's not in a rural area. We just bring the black bag in, flip it upside down, tie it up, throw it away. If we're off the grid, we can just dig a hole, dump it in there. Easy peasy. You've probably seen this shower head on TikTok. That's exactly what it is. This is like another filtration system. We also have two more so we can basically get water from any water source. Like we filled up in creeks and wells and all that kind of stuff. It has to go through the filter on the hose, the filter just by the water tank underneath, and then this filter so we can basically drink all of the water that we bring in through our tank is safe, which is nice. Personally, what I love most about the lifestyle is the freedom that we get from it. Sometimes we live on the beach, go north a little bit and park in the mountains. Getting to experience all different types of lifestyles in the comfort of your own home always. Taking your home with you everywhere you go is such a luxury. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you'd like to see more tours of Overlander tiny homes, make sure that you check out the link in the description and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.